So, Joe, why did the kid drop his ice cream cone? Because he got hit by a bus. <laughs> Your son told me that joke as he walked in the door. <laughs> Pretty Three times, because I had he stumbled over the uh, setup a couple of times. But he dropped. So, one day, the commandant at the concentration camp comes out, and he lines everybody up, and he says, Good news, everybody. Today, everybody gets to change their underwear. And everyone's like, oh, my God. Thank goodness for small miracles. It's so long. This is going to be great. He goes, okay, you change it with you. You change with you. You change with you. Do you want me to keep going? Do you get you back there? You change it with you. So You mean, he, well, he would have been, you then change it with you then. <laughs> you then. Uh, Good news, everybody. <laughs> See, well, I should have told you, tell you. So maybe I should, in advance, tell you the jokes because uh, get to Phoenix last week. I Wait, was. Uh, who cares? What's the name of the show? Uh, Let's introduce ourselves to the person. <laughs> Hello, Ball. Welcome to Carnival Personnel. I'm Jacques. And I am embarrassed. <laughs> you should be for, for being friends with me. Um. Uh, and that that good looking guy over there is Joe. Uh, now, no names. Okay. Now, uh, as I was saying, I got to Phoenix last week and got chastised for effing up the toothbrush joke. It, it wasn't a stutter; it was a hair lip. So, John, uh -huh. well, you know, John, who I took the joke from, uh, that's a, that's, I literally think that was the first thing he said. Way to fuck up the toothbrush joke. It was a hair lip, not a stutter. Um, I felt great shame. Set the tone for the weekend. So, um, yep. But it's teamwork. It is. So, good, for, lucky for you. Now, what were you doing in Phoenix? Um, playing hockey poorly. Oh. Um, but I, the big thing is, I finally got to see the old Friday night guys that we talk directly to every podcast here. Friday night hockey, F and H, F, run run by the great Paul Lagoire. So I uh, we missed last week. I, I you were missed last week. I was. You were. But you see, Joe does not believe me. Or doesn't care. It's six and one, two doesn't. Both. It can both. be both. Then uh, people yeah. actually listen and were saddened. To uh, to have a whole week without you. Oh, well, you know, you know my number. <laughs> then, um, but I did. I got to L.A. last week. We'll get into it in a sec. But it was great. It was it was great seeing everybody. I I spent thirty six hours on the ground in L.A. Got to see a bunch of hockey people who didn't make the trip. But it was great. But the important thing is uh, about. About two months worth of opening jokes kind of came back with me from Phoenix. All right, you know, that and eight. <laughs> that wasn't one of the jokes. No, there's nothing. You funny. came back with full blown AIDS. <laughs> like you skipped over HIV to get AIDS. It, 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 so if you're gonna do something, you, you know, you, what is this? 1985. You, 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 do, you do it right. All right. Um, but I did. So just before we we took a week hiatus, um, I had to go to LA because the premiere of my movie. What was it called? Oh, what is it called? Assimilate. I'm sure it's still playing. It, it's it's <laughs> right. Assimilate. Uh huh. And so it was great. It was it was my first red you know red carpet premiere of a movie that you know you didn't I, pull a Vladimir Putin. I did. did. You? No, I did not, <laughs> dude, dude. How great was that? How many times do you think you watched that clip? Once. That's oh, all that's I, it. That's oh. all I need to see of Vladimir. Oh, Putin. I I couldn't I could not get enough of it. Mm. Literally could not get Russia's enough of funniest it. videos. You know, um, we've got laughs from coast to coast. <laughs> we make you smile. Yeah, I don't think he actually had landed on the red carpet yet, and the KGB had arrested the guy who put the carpet out and started like you know torturing his children in front of him. But your red carpet event went. Splendidly well. It really did. It was great. I'll, I'll be. Uh, I'll be honest. It, it was. It was. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, but at the end of the movie, to see my name on a big screen for a real big boy pants, you know, multi million dollar movie with some real actors was uh was great. You had a moment. It, it really was great. It was great seeing like the actors from the movie who, uh, as I told you, like the the, the kid Callum is. He's great. He's a great kid. 
but but it was great because the whole time we shot in Mississippi, you know, I treated him like crap. Like we had a fun little, and 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 so here he is, like with a you know, maybe like yeah, I don't know, like twenty different cameras going and people asking him questions, and I just walked behind him and like. Don't fucking embarrass me. And just turned and walked away. And that's when he came over and bear hugged. It was it was fun. It was great. Here was the highlight of the evening. When I landed at the airport, I got the cheapest car I could for the day and a half I was going to be there. This and, is at LAX. At, at LAX. And it was an off-brand. Uh, it was through Expedia. So it wasn't oh, like... Did you, did you rent from Nertz? <laughs> and... It, it was one of those things where. What at the H? <laughs> it was the you know two H's in the first one silent though, which is confusing. And then they, uh, but I, but I rent this car. It's an it's an off brand type thing. I I get to the dealership place and they're like, oh, the car you're renting is like twenty four dollars a day, but we have we can upgrade. And I'm like, oh. Here we go. It's like for an extra nickel. So I'm like, sure, I'll take the midsize versus the you know the, the Fred Flintstone pedal with your feet kind of thing. So I'm like, fine, you know, it's fine. I just want a car and get the heck out of here. So I'm sitting down waiting for it to come, you know, be pulled up. And then the lady's like, um, they're a little backed up back there. They're cleaning all the cars. It's going to be about ten or fifteen minutes. Or gee, there's a Cadillac ready now if you want it. And I'm like. I'm waiting for the sales pitch. And I'm like, well, wh- what's the difference in rate? She goes, oh, no, it's just ready. It's like, if you want to take that car, it's ready now. Dude, it's a pimp mobile. Like, <laughs> literally, I-, I needed to get like a purple leisure jumpsuit from the 70s and a big hat. The only downside is that the pool water would splash the back of your head every time you got a red light. <laughs> so, I mean, literally, it's it's the most ostentatious car I think I've been behind the wheel on. You know, right. huge. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, you know, a forget about it kind of, you know, kiss the <laughs> rings it's fine i you know i run the only time it wasn't fine i go to the i go to the me- the movie it's all goes great couple good meetings the day before and the lunch the day of all this stuff and so the, the the producer bill is having an after party at his palatial beverly hills mansion mm. uh funny what uh what 10 billion dollars at the box office can do for you for your uh that's what assimilate made it did, you know, legendary pictures over the oh. course of the time Bill put it together. Anyways, so eh, it's not late. It's like 11, 30, 12. I'm at a light in Beverly Hills, and it's like I just feel, like you know when you know somebody's looking at you, and I kind of slightly look over, and it's Bill looking at me just shaking his head. It's like, what are you doing, like driving this Cadillac, you know, I get to the house and it was the topic of conversation for the next hour. It's like, and I can't tell you how many people like Bill's like, and the funny thing is everybody knows like me. They, I'm not putting on like, it's funny. I think I told Joe uh, like the day before uh, or yeah, I think it was the day before, two days before, like Bill texts me, says, hey, there's going to be a lot of press there and stuff like this, you know, dress sharp. And then about 10 seconds later, well, sharp for you. <laughs> and as he texts that, I'm not kidding, management was at Target buying me a new Batman shirt. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm not putting on any airs. It's like that's who I am. Yeah. You wore the clothes with the smallest holes. You know. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Look at quoting struggling. Uh, here's the best thing. I get there and there were some people really dressed up. The actress looked fantastic and dressed. You know, the director was the L.A. director kind of T-shirt, jeans with a blazer over it. Yeah, his shirt was a picture of the original Batmobile, the Adam uh. West one. So it's like, see, I yeah, you fit right in exactly. Yeah. So you but, know what? Actually, fashion finally caught up to you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I've been saying and waiting for that since '74. But the great thing is, it's like I'm not a Cadillac guy, and everybody knows that. And this thing is a yeah. boat, and Bill just sitting there, just shaking his head, <laughs> like, "What are you doing, <laughs> dumpy guy in a glitzy car?" <laughs> Cut it out, Dad. Glitzy. <laughs> I don't. Glitzy's not the right word, but it is like, you know, it's 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 ostentatious, as you said. You know, it, a dead hooker mobile in the back. So what the hell are all these dead hookers doing in here? They. Uh, I've never seen so many dead hookers in all my life. That's <laughs> Norm Macdonald's good dirty work. Yeah, it's a great movie. It is underrated movie. No Criterion collection, unfortunately, but you know, we'll wait. The um. 
let's 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 talk a little bit about what I miss in LA. Dude, the food options for me are so much more. Like, I mean, the regular stuff. Like, do you, is there even a Taco Bell around? Where, where's the closest Taco Bell to you? I think the closest Taco Bell is in Revere on Route 16. Is there a Del Taco option here? No, Del Taco doesn't make it up here. And if it does, it's well hidden. I haven't seen it. I mean, the the obvious one for LA is In and Out. Uh, mm-hmm. But then I loved In and Out when I was there. Carl's Jr. Oh my God, Carl's Jr. is great. Uh, they now have veggie burgers, like real beyond. They have to. Meat. I mean, they're in LA for Christ's sake. And it, this is just in the last few years. Del Taco now has like the the real the meat, vegan, the no, vegan no, meat for their good. burritos and and tacos now a, a, as an option. Then there's the fast, not the fast food. Not the fast food, but not quite fine dining kind of. Yeah, like mid range kind of. Right. Yeah. The, the veggie grill and stuff, though. Honestly, I was there like 36 hours and just missed, missed that food so much. What I didn't miss, and I took a picture and management posted it on her Facebook. And now, granted, it was in Beverly Hills, but it was like four ninety eight for a gallon of gas. Mm. It's like. Okay, so yeah, well, that's I'll California. shut up about the three dollars back home. I know, but that's California. Like that's just it's never really gotten to below four dollars, really, in in some time. I mean, I hadn't lived there since two thousand, and uh, God, it was probably like a, like around three something a gallon back then. So it is what it is. Complain about it, you know, but there's no real options. But so L.A. was great, and then I went to Phoenix, drove with. Friend of the show, Biff. Fantastic drive. Um, but he's Asian. Uh, yes. Yes. See? See, that's how progressive I am. I might be a racist. See, I'm, I only said that because not that I have you know, prejudices or racial profiling of Asian drivers or anything like that. I just know that you do and that you would allow that is a, a testament to your uh, evolution. The, the, the great thing is for all my racist remarks and misogynistic remarks, which are many. It all started eh, 12 years ago, and I don't mind it at all. I'm not ashamed about it. But we lived at the beach, and, and parking was tight. I physically had trouble parallel parking because of a bad shoulder. I can't turn a certain way. And I would have to go upstairs and get my Asian wife to come downstairs and do the parallel parking for me. <coughs> so as much as I like to make fun of the Asians... And the blacks, and the Jews, and the Portuguese, and the uh, the whites, the white, oh, they're the the worst, fucking worst, the absolute worst. Uh, but yeah, it w- it was great. And the day before, I saw a bunch of hockey pals, and, and was saying it's like Biff has two options: getting caught up on Carnival Personnel as we drive eight hours to Phoenix, or listening to me do live Carnival Personnels for eight hours solo without recording it. So, and which everybody said. Oh, that's the worst. Joe's the best. Everyone. Joe's everyone. And what's really fun Lies. is I there were some guys like our friend Zach, the Mexican, who we, we refer it's like listens all the time. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, do you not get anything else? <laughs> but it was. It was really fun to find out like how much the guys listen. Uh the John Taylor fertilizer playoff streak intact. Great. Of not making the playoffs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is great. Because, no, we we love getting together and playing. And we want to play well. We want to play better than we usually do or better than they do. This is my first time in, like, four years. And you want to, you know, be on the cusp of making the playoffs but not have to stay the extra day. And, or, or if it, if it's sometimes it's like you play your last Ron Robin game at, like, noon on Sunday and the final is at, like, 11 o'clock at night or worse, like, 4 o'clock at night. <laughs> Three hours later, putting on the wet gear and getting back out there. And, yeah. But luckily, we got a couple of ringers to make sure that we don't make the playoffs. <laughs> uh, how? I was awful. Like, I was awful by my standards, having not played in a long time. And aside from that, I was awful. <laughs> and how I wasn't the worst one, you know? How How I was well within my uh, – my, I'm trying to think of the right way – you know, I was not out of bounds for being upset with how some other people played because it's like as bad as I was, it's like, oh my God, really? I had a, <laughs> I only had a couple of reallys or oh, come ons, which uh-huh. is, 
<clears throat> but it, but it was right great. No, I'm just, I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> You're all verklempt. But uh, that, that's why we didn't have the podcast last week. And I'm sorry to say that <coughs> um, every year I have to renew our subscription to Podbean that hosts our wonderful podcast. And I'm sorry to say that it had automatically renewed on the 29th. <laughs> I didn't have a that. chance. I got the email. I could, God damn it. It came in at like three in the morning. Yeah, I was just like, ah. Oh. You got four minutes to cancel. Ah. Well, you have to deal another year with me. Money down the drain. For money well spent, I'm sorry. Money. Well, a- a- according to the people at FNH and, and the other people who I saw Tuesday Night Hockey. Well, maybe we can start a <clears throat> Patreon. You know, uh, people do that all the time, and it's like, Whatever that is. I mean, I know what a Patreon is. I actually, I actually uh, isn't the big money now in Twitch. Uh, right, be on that's Twitch? live streaming. <laughs> I could, <laughs> I could live stream myself playing video games on my CRT TV, yelling the c word, uh, <laughs> and then the money would be rolling in. I'm sure after that. Which, you know, speaking of the C word, I was right about Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. Don't that, say the C word. Don't, no, Try Not to Say Cunt is the name of his podcast. Yes. They had Leonard Malton on, like, the last episode, going over. It was a really fun interview, but Ishtar is a movie that he's been waiting for the soundtrack to come out, and he talked to Paul Williams about it about, like, a year ago. He's like... And he said, it's a good movie that got admonished because it was an unthinkable $40 million to produce it back in a time when $40 million was an unthinkable amount of money. Yeah, like Willow cost $40 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, it's it's a good movie. It's smarter. It's too smart for some people. But the music is so great. The songs that Paul Williams wrote for it are just... So Paul Williams wrote for his show. Okay. Wrote all the songs. Huh. You know, they're, they're two awful songwriters. Why there so many songs about rainbows? Oh, uh, now, now I'm, I'm going to try not to sing all the songs from Ishtar, but putting the train back on the tracks a little bit. Why? A, a, uh, a passing of a Boston sports legend. Is legend the right word? Yes. Boston passing of Bill Buckner... Who let life slip uh, through his fingers? You know, I mean, since nineteen eighty six. That's a hack line. I had to say it. What's no, that? it's like it's like because I thought he died. We talked about this before. He tried to commit suicide a few years back. He jumped in front of a bus. One right through his legs. And what I've always said, and it's true, people remember that one play. It was one of it. This is not an exaggeration. This is not hyperbole. One of the most historic plays. And baseball history, not Red Sox history, not World Series history. In the history of baseball, that play ranks among one of the most if famous or infamous, infamous, depending on how you want to look at it. The Mets look at it as famous. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the slow roller down. Everybody knows the story. Uh, but what people forget is if he picks up that ball and steps on the base, they they – Break the curves, they win the World Series. He's probably a Hall of Famer. I mean, that guy had a 22 year career, close to, I mean, a 298 lifetime batting title. I mean, how many people play 22 years teetering on 200 or, or th- uh, batting average of 300? A gold glover. Uh, he won a batting title. I mean, seriously, this guy was a great player his entire career. That's later in his career, and, and truly, that play in that moment was probably the lowest of the low for me as a sports fan. And in your your ten when that happened, uh, eighty six, I was uh, nine. I think I just turned nine, and yeah, but I was out of it. Like I, I was not a sports fan. I knew about it, and I was making jokes about it at school the next day because. I was so detached from it. I had no emotional connection to the Red Sox. And people were like, kids were like, shut the fuck up, dude. What are you fucking talking about? You know, like, why are you making jokes about this shit? And then I got beat up. I didn't get beat up. I ran. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I didn't watch the game. I, th- I don't think I watched the game live, but I definitely saw the highlights on the news and I knew about it. But I think the greatest like retelling of that story is done Ken Burns' baseball documentary, and Bob Costas is telling the story. Oh, it's, it's haunting. It's it's so haunting. I mean, they, it's literally haunting because the segment starts off. It's called the segment is called the Curse, and it starts off with eerie organ music, like 
and then it gets to Bob Costas relaying how he, as a you know first World Series that he's ever covered for NBC, he's prepping for the inevitable World Series celebration. Like as he's like watching them put the plastic up around, and, and they're the going into the ninth inning. The Red Sox are up by like three runs, I believe. Yeah. And they start putting the plastic. Yeah, and they would start putting the plastic up to protect against the champagne. Frail Mrs. Yawkey is being led down to the dugout or to the, the locker room. And then he's thinking to himself, wow, this is the first time that not only the Red Sox are going to win the World Series in you know recent history, this is going to be the first time that they're ever going to win the, re- the World Series in recorded history. You know, 1918 was the last time. So he's trying to think of like, you know, what do you say to uh, Wade Boggs and what do you say to Roger Clemens and what do you say to, you know, Mrs. Jockey? Like, how do you prepare? Because he's got to interview all these people. And then Shiraldi, like he gives up some runs and Stanley and and he's talking to his producer in his earpiece on the mic. And he goes, "Um, what happens if they tie this game? And the producer says, you get the hell out of that locker room as fast as possible. And then, um, yeah, he talks about Buckner and how they had to inject him. He, like, he was put in there at the insistence of... Well, he of, left of, in there, right. So so it's a National League park, so there's no DH. And he was playing first base. And, and the whole the whole year, it, it, you know, he would come out. If it looked like he wasn't going to get another at-bat or... One way or another, he was usually off the field the eighth and ninth inning. And the word is that, that Yaki called down and said, because he was her boy, like, it, and her husband, like, you know, it was like the last big player he had signed, free agent thing, wanted him on the field when they won the game. Like, specifically took the decision out of the management's hand and wanted, you know, she wanted him on the field when they won the game. And honestly, Neither one of our, 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 Joe and I have four sons in, you know, between us, not an athlete in the bunch and, uh, including ourselves and, uh, any one of them would make that play. Like, like literally any one of them would make that play 99 out of a hundred times. He was hobbled with knee injuries all season. He, right. Like he was injected with cortisone shots to, but that wasn't even a, t- I mean, that's literally a roller that that's something that. An eight-year-old would make 99 out of 100 times, and for whatever reason. And I was looking, you know, thanks to Instant Replay, you look and see, did it take a weird hop? Did it do anything unusual that a seasoned first baseman would not be able to handle? No. He just didn't get low enough. Right. That's all it was. But anyways, that play, and and, and look, with... We're assholes. I mean, you know, we're getting into sports talk later. We get it. We're not going to go over all the numbers like the last two decades, the last decade. But from 1986 to 1987, I was a junior senior in high school. And in that time frame, in an 18-month period of time, the Red Sox lose that with, with one of the most horrific plays. The Patriots were the losing end of the then most lopsided Super Bowl. The Bruins were the victim of a gentleman sweep, a five-game sweep. At the, oh, what was it? No, it was a sweep by the Edmonton Oilers. And for the first time in NBA history, the Lakers beat the Celtics in an NBA Finals. The Celtics, I think, were 11-0 and in championship games against the Lakers at that point. But that, that play... Um, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I remember where I was watching it, who I was watching it with. There was a Met fan there, haunted me, haunted me for two decades. Now, now it's laughable. I remember that after the Red Sox won the, their oh four World Series, I believe was it was it ESPN or one of those networks was ha- they had via satellite. Maybe it was Fox. They had via satellite Bill Buckner and. They were the commentators or the guys who were in the studio were asking him about like. Can you look back on it and, you know, not laugh about it, but do you have some perspective? Or uh, Boston sort of, like, healed since the 86 World Series and, you know, have sort of, like, apologized for their attitude towards Buckner. And Buckner was like, yeah, I don't care. They, they, they you know, those guys ruined my life. I don't, you know. Um, they did. I I went to high school and I was in Andover, Mass. He lived in Andover. They had to move. They honestly. They ran him out of town. I, I think. No, oh, that's that's early October. I don't think they made. They they might have made it through Thanksgiving, 
But by Christmas, they were out of there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just had to. Yeah, he moved to like Iowa or something. It, 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 it was, it was, you know, it was awful, yeah. you know. Um, but now you look back, and I think it was in 07, after they won in 07 the second time, he was one of the, when they have people come out of the monster opening day and get their chairs and stuff like that, I think they had brought him out. After the, uh, they, yeah, it was after the 07 one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, 04 was just like, what the fuck, you know? And right. 07 was like, okay, now, hey, we, this can, we can get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> and they have. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, just think about today. They they went from not winning the World Series for over about 70 years, close to 70 years. Now they've won it four times in the last 15. 04, right. I mean, do you realize that makes them the second Winning winningest it. team in Boston. <laughs> that makes him the second. <laughs> anyway, so Bill Buckner, and uh, again, it's like, it's just funny because now you see that, and it's like, oh, remember that isn't that quaint. It doesn't, it, it was scarring. And I mean, literally, I mean, they made fun of it in the movie Fever Pitch. Right, right. When Jimmy Fallon's character falls into the depression, he's a diehard Red Sox fan, and like he falls off the wagon. Oh, his girlfriend, Drew Barrymore, breaks up with him, and he decides, like, th- his friends are like, where the, where the hell is, you know, Jimmy or whatever his name was? And they bust his apartment door down, and he's in this blackened room with nothing but, like, chicken wing bones around him with, like, grease on his face, and he's just rewinding the Buckner moment over, over and, and over, over on a VHS. You, you're, at this point, so you're three, so I was ten. Hmm. No, no. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? Bucky Dent in 1979. Oh, God. Oh. You know, and that's the thing. It's no, like, oh, I'm sorry. Whom? Bucky fucking Dent. Thank you. Again, backup catcher for the Yankees, one game playoff. The, the Red Sox had a 16-game lead going into September. Basically, they <laughs> like had to— I like going through like, the lowest hits not, of the Red Sox. Well, that's it. They had to not lose every game in the month of September. And even if they lost every game— the Yankees had to win every game to force a one-game playoff, and here it is. And it's one of those monsters that, at Fenway. By that Fenway, the, you know the thing about the big monster is there are so many home runs that are fly balls in other parks, and there are so many long singles that you like would be. I think home fr- runs. Am I misremembering a detail? I don't even think the Green Monster was in effect. Like it had nothing to do with. Bucky fucking dense home run. I don't think it went over the monster. I think he hit a dead center. Oh no, no, it was it was it would have been a fly ball in any other. Oh, park. Okay, so it did go over the. It monster. went over the monster, right. and he's the backup it. catcher. Yeah. I mean, he's not even a starter, and in the tenth inning, hits you know hits what was a game winning home run. That's the same year. Well, at least they didn't win the World Series that the, year. The br- <laughs> exactly, and I cried into my Reggie bar, <laughs> and then and then the same year. Earlier that year in seventy nine in April, the the Bruins have a three to two lead in the end of the third end of the game seven against the Montreal Canadiens for the Stanley Cup. Not only going to beat Montreal, they're gonna win the cup. And too many men on the ice penalty. Montreal scores on the power play, goes on to, you know, score, and it's like that was our life. And so but Bucky Dent was the worst of the worst of the worst. And until Aaron fucking Boone. Aaron Boone. Wait. You don't remember Aaron Boone? Why am I? He, he an old three? Oh 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 oh! oh. Aaron I'm fucking a... Boone. No, see, an, an <laughs> the three, Yankee. Well, here's the thing: in oh three we lost, but Pedro threw Don Seymour to the ground. That, <laughs> I, I I mean I forget that they lost in oh three to the Yankees. All I remember is sitting in a hotel. Management was visiting from L.A. We were in a hotel watching that game, and just like. I don't know if that's my favorite memory, but, you know. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, you're throwing an 86-year-old guy to the ground. I do remember Horatio Sands portraying Don Zimmer on Saturday Night Live, and I think it was during Weekend Update. You know, he comes charging out, and then, I don't know, maybe, I forget who threw him down, but then, oh, maybe he just went down on his own. He goes, oh, down I go. <laughs> like the, He would just keep falling down and rolling around. Oh, that was oh my god! You know, too much, too much fun. We're spending way too much time so, on, uh, um, on awful moments of the Red Sox history. And, and Bill Buckner passed this week, so yeah, at sixty nine. Which nice, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I can uh, now add that to my repertoire. You, yeah, okay. you see my impression. Of- oh yes, <laughs> nah, yeah. Um, okay, well, you know, rest in peace, uh, Bill Buckner. 
Sorry about that. So uh, I wanted to talk to Joe a little bit. I was going to talk to him off 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 air. So my my oldest guy, as as Joe pointed out with the opening joke this week, why did the kid drop his ice cream cone? He got hit by a bus. So about a week ago, my kid got into telling jokes. And he saw one of the YouTubers he likes, you know, put together some animation. And it's a lot of the same jokes like that. Uh, was it Milo? I don't know. <laughs> no, Milo, yeah, no, no. I was, oh, on, God. Yeah. I was oh. Right, trying to make a dark joke and you, yeah, the hell with it. No, Next. That, that guy's stuff is gold. <laughs> yes, right. That, that you know, um, yeah. gold store. Anyways, <laughs> so he, um, Go on. so here's the funny thing. Joe, I've had to, and, and a couple times he's been like, we're driving somewhere, and he, and he's trying the material out with me. So, Papa, these two Irish guys, I'm like, no, no, pump the brakes. The irony of me having to talk to my son about boundaries with jokes is that lost on you? Is that you know? Because it's a str- it's literally a struggle for me. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because. It's when when I got to see the guys on Tuesday. There's like five or six guys I haven't seen in a while, and, and Scotty Blackson and a couple other people were joking about the text messages that we always go back and forth, and how none of us can run for any political office on any level. It's like because of the racism and the misogyny. I turned to Scotty Black. I'm like, what's with you and the Belgians? You know, and everyone's like <laughs> looking at Scotty Black, like, wait, he hates Bel. Who hates Belgians? You know, <laughs> but the fact that I have to talk to my oldest about there are. Jokes that just are no, you can't do. Yeah. Um, you can't. But but me, because as you already said, here's the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, you're just being a dad. You know, you're doing. You take care of your kids. Well, the one of the jokes that I really had to talk to her about, and it's a joke that I've told so many times that now he's heard. I've been really careful about keeping my racism and misogyny in check. Um, Kids will do that to you. You know, it's funny because I was you know, half Korean, and I often refer to her as, well, I'll say something like, she's going to the kitchen. It's like, you want to say what I'm like? Yeah, hurry up. Chop, chop, Milan. It's like, what an awful, awful, awful thing to say. What with Milan not being, you know... Korean, Korean. <laughs> you know. I would have thought the chop chop part yeah. would have been bad enough da, 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 to get my, you know. So I'm an, I'm horrible, but I've really worked hard to not. So he, so he tells this one. Uh what do you call a black guy who flies a plane for a living? A pilot, you racist. Right. So, and 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 they did a little animation. It's like you know, what do you call it? And you see it. You see the space. What fucking know, channel spaceship. is this kid watching? Right. Well, it's what um, I think it's A S T or Fox a- News Kids. No. <laughs> no, it's it's a uh, it's one that if I show you, you know they they've been watching for years and it's pretty funny stuff. But it's fine. I mean, in context, they're older and they're are they explaining like, how bad racist jokes no, are. Or are they but just- that's the thing. It's like yeah, this is an anti-racist joke. You know, but oh, right. it's you. It's in the context of racism. If if you, it can be completely misinterpreted, especially by another fourth grader. You know, and when that fourth grader goes home and says, "Oh, this kid told this joke today, mom." Uh-huh. It's like it could be misconstrued, but the fact that I've had to have this talk with him is um, it's an interesting situation for me because. A, some of the stuff is really funny, mm-hmm. and Irish guys do drink a lot, you know? Um, uh-huh. You know? Well, you know, it's just part of, again, part of your evolution, you know? It's not good to be stagnant and not change for the better. <laughs> it's not... Uh, is it? Is it? What are we both wearing right now? Just, what, so, stagnant and not changing. Joe, you know, what are you wearing? <laughs> um... Well, that's a kind of a personal question. Hey, back to a, the future shirt. <laughs> and you're wearing a Batman shirt. You know, and yeah. probably that, the first time we met in 91, 91, 92? No, 94. Is that late? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm going to say you were wearing a Back to the Future shirt. <laughs> they didn't shirt. have Back to the Future shirts in 94. Uh, I looked. Nobody has two TVs, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it, yeah, it's, you, it's fine to not want your child to be telling <laughs> Chinaman jokes. Especially if the Chinaman happens to be Asian. I mean, happens to be Korean or Japanese <laughs> or, you know, you know, one of those other squiggly line languages. Uh, moving on to 
it more more better news. Uh, more better news. Uh, more better news at five. That, 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 that's a new tagline for ABC in, in Boston. More better news coming up. Uh, is it uh, Alex Trebek is, uh, I don't think he's got a clean bill of health, but has said that it's going cr- really, really well. I, I didn't see the updated uh, video, but I heard about it. And I- He's not dead, so I glean from that that things are looking up. Will he finish out his contract? Uh, yes, I'm going to say so. Why not? Who is doing better, Alex Trebek or Jeopardy James? <laughs> James Holtz, Hol- Holtzhauer, Householder, Boomhauser. <laughs> uh, he's now 31, as as we record this, 31 wins in. I think he's 150 away from the record, 150,000 away from the record, or something pretty yeah, close. Yeah, like he's pretty close. I think it's two point. I, I lost track. I haven't been keeping up as much as I should be. I just remember seeing, reading that I guess like a week ago, or maybe we talked about this. Stop me if I have. Alex Trebek, one day, star of the show by talking that 77,000 whatever had been the one day like record record for a long time. And that he is averaging that. Like, he is averaging <laughs> the all-time record on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I follow this account on Twitter called Buzzer Blog. It was interesting because one episode, uh, James had, like, $50,000 as his Final Jeopardy, you know, total. And they said, yeah, it, you know we are spoiled as game show Jeopardy fans when you look at a $50,000 title and go, yeah, I guess that's good. Uh, you know, it's, it's not so bad. I didn't lose. Yeah, right. <laughs> it could be worse. I didn't walk away with a two thousand dollars second prize. I know. Oh, God forbid. I mean, but this is great for Jeopardy. It's it's they need him to you know break Hank Aaron's record or break <laughs> Babe Ruth's record. You know, they need him to do that just because it's uh, it's exciting. And you know, I mean, he, he's kind of an odd guy, but he's not a totally unlikable guy. Wait, wait. Somebody whose life is answering, you know. Trivial questions. Uh, well, like Ken Jennings, about the Byzantine Empire. Yeah. Well, Ken Jennings was, uh, you know, he was an he was a pretty clean cut. He is a pretty clean cut guy, you know. So like he was like the poster child for Jeopardy. Like, kind of funny, you know, not too nerdy, but very knowledgeable, very quick, you know, just built for Jeopardy. Like that was like the poster child for Jeopardy. Now that he's gone, you know, it's been years since somebody like a phenom like James, who we have now, is there and. Really, just the only thing odd about him that I can really tell is that that smile, smile. that smile yeah. at the end. But like, I don't know. I guess he's self aware. But um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to. It. But it, it is getting to the point where, like, after he breaks the record, you do want to see how far he'll go. But there will be fatigue. Like, it will be like, okay, here comes the buzzsaw again. You know, I mean, how many Passions of the Christ can you watch? <laughs> like, how many snuff films can you watch? <laughs> it's like Jeopardy snuff. It's like we Seven. know. Okay, <laughs> I'm like. You know, it gets boring. It's just like, okay, we know this guy's just going to rake in, you know, at least 50 Gs right. at the end of an episode. On an and off these, day. Yeah. And I mean, I hope they're po- I hope the producers are like intentionally putting up the dumbest of the dumb, you know, like the, 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 the Q team, you know, like not the A <laughs> team or the B team. Like they're, like these are the guys who like didn't even have to test into Jeopardy. They just, you know, sign their name with an X. Like, like, and like the, on the application, um, the price is right. You just wait in line outside. Exactly and, right. Yeah, there was audience participation. Whatever, you know, whoever looked good on camera that day and could uh, work the buzzer, <laughs> they got to play against James. Um, it's just it's interesting. But there are like a couple of contestants who have been giving him runs for his money. There was one. It was under a hundred dollars difference. Yeah, like like about. Episode 20, 21, 22. Yeah, so. there, there was a time where he was like in second place at double Jeopardy. Like at the second round, James was in second place. So he went on to win by $8 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll wait and see. So yeah, Jeopardy James is on a roll, uh, as are we. Moving on, it's been a couple of weeks since we've seen him. How much, how much time do you spend thinking about Avengers Endgame on a regular basis? Because none. It's still. I know with you, you that's your world. It's not every thought, but it's damn near close. It's like, well, what if this has happened and how did this happen? I'm not, and I'm not even talking the the time travel aspect of it, but just the I'll just be driving and I'll just be really happy about something in it. Or, you know, oh man, I'm really happy Steve Rogers wouldn't have that life. And then I'd be like, oh man, you know. Romanoff, like she's, you know, how hard was it for Clint to see his best friend, you know, 
almost soulmate, like fall to her death in order to get him the soul. I mean, it literally, dude, it's that movie has has t- rocked my world to its core. It sticks with you. It sticks with you. It it, it had an impact on you. I think I'm. I think End I'm game gonna... for Marvel. Not so much for Jacques. <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, to probably get a viewing in next week. Like during the day, boys are in school. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. And I and, and as we found out, depending on what movie theater you go to, just walk in. Just <laughs> give it a shot. Just, just walk in. The worst they can say is no. Right. Exactly. They don't call the cops because there's you know one guy working the entire concession stand, ticket taking. He doesn't have time to call the police. Uh, well. I, I'll, I'll sidebar. I was going to you know, talk about this later, but I, we went to the whole family. We went to see, oh, the boys and I went to see Detective Pikachu. Oh, how was uh, that? It was, it was it, a movie. What, what do you think? What do you think? Like, think about it for a second. Get the whole movie in your head. That's exactly yeah. what it was. You know, was Ryan Reynolds great? Ryan Reynolds was great as Pikachu. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, you know they had some of um, those obscure um, uh, Pokemon. Pokemon characters. Uh, oh, what's that? What's that Pokemon character I'm trying to think of? Oh, not Pikachu. There's you know every other po- uh, Pokemon in my world. This is Pikachu, and then there's not Pikachu. and the rest. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it was fun. It was good. We get in. We sit. We were starting, and I tried. I tried just like I when we went to Avengers. Try to went to buy something and I couldn't. And I'm actually talking to a manager afterwards, and I'm like, "Dude, it's like I was happy to throw another thirty dollars." I said, "You know, at you, but you know, this is ridiculous." And he's like, "I can't hire anybody." It's like I was just and and he, he's saying this in front of my little guy. He's like, "You know, yeah, I just hired like sixteen people this week. Half of them don't show up, and the other and half of the half that show up don't make it two weeks. And it's all these high school kids, and it's this, and but nobody wants these jobs." And he's like, and he goes, "Yeah, I come to the office and I cry a little bit every day." <laughs> and like my little guy's looking at me, I'm like, "Don't, don't, don't, don't cry." There was, there was a a little kerfuffle with one of the kids behind the counter. I'm like, "Hey, you're gonna have to get your manager before." Before I put your head through this window, and um, but calmly in front in front of my little guy, and, and the manager comes out. He's like, "Yeah, we keep having the same problem, but all right, what are you gonna this, do?" Is it right? And he's like, "Here, just take this." <laughs> and he just <laughs> and and then my little guy's like, "Wait a minute, if you complain about some stuff, they give you thing." I'm like, and I said, "It's like I was I was polite, but I was very firm and direct, you know." Um, you know, it's funny because when I talk, you know, long story, I'm, I'm, I'm in line, I get to the front line and I go to pay for it. And the kid's like, oh, this is, this is, uh, cards only, um, uh, wouldn't take my cash. <laughs> so I'm like, how do I know that? And he goes, well, cause of the sign. I'm like, what sign? He had a sign facing him, not out the tech cash only. And I'm like, chuckles. Uh, and he goes, well, you got to go to that sign. You know, there's 10 people in that line. I'm like. Do I have to go to the back of the line or will he just help me? He goes, no, you have to wait in line. I'm like, tell you what, I'm going to wait right here. You're going to go get a manager. Two minutes later, another high school kid comes over. He's like, can I help you? I'm like, you manager? No. Then you can't help me. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I'm that guy. I'm 50 now. I can do these things. I hiked the pants up to my navel. I yelled at a bunch of people to get off my lawn. Right. But- you actually like have a carry-on lawn with Yes, you. with me. Just And I put it down. Yeah, you roll it out. And then when people... Think about walking on it, you know. Um, but but honestly, and the guy comes, he's like, yeah, you know, it's like little things like having the sign face out that says card only might have been the way to go. I thought that was to remind me <laughs> that we don't take cash. So, so, and, and, and I wasn't overly rude to the high school kid, but I'm like, chuckles, the grownups are talking. <laughs> and the little guy's like, why are you calling him Chuckles? It's like, well, you were right here and calling him Fuckface probably would have not been right. Yeah, you had the edited for television dialogue. <laughs> but it, honestly, when the guy's like, yeah, I come to work and cry a little bit every day. <laughs> the little guy's like. You got to love him after that, oh, right? Right, exactly. Like, dude, don't cry. So um, we're going to move on. The only other things I had in this is um, – the good place that the show that I like, where the really dumb guy is obsessed with the Jaguars and Blake Bortles, uh, Blake Bortles is no longer with the Jaguars, and the producer's like, "Yeah, we're sticking with it. It's, <laughs> it's just too good." Um, and now we will. We, you know, I don't even want to talk the awful, but we little, yeah. little, little, little bit. So while I while we've been gone, Mueller 
his last day in office. He gives a little press conference. We hear his voice. And which he says, I'm not saying he's not guilty. It's just we don't prosecute that. But I'm not saying he didn't commit crimes. We just didn't come forward with it. You know, Mm -hmm. which, of course, Fox News said complete exoneration. Right. Um, What do you any any quick thoughts on that? No. (laughs) (laughs) No, I get it. And and, and then also, you know, we talked about before I left and and a couple more states are jumping on with the forced pregnancy thing. Um, I don't know if I'm ripping off Patton Oswalt. It might be Patton Oswalt who he tweeted out last week. He only agrees with a woman's right to choose if it's rape incest or she chooses it (laughs) you know uh but more 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 states are trying to get you know to the handmaid entails the census that you know they're trying it i think it hit the supreme court now there's a there's a citizenship question right that that they know is going to scare people from answering it and we won't get into the whole thing but if you're not accounted for then the federal government doesn't send money to that area so it, it it, yeah, and it also fucks with the voting and all the that. The voting, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and to the districting. It's yep. another it's like it just with just be It's scary mandering. Blow huh? I like scared, that. Scary yeah, mandering. Scary mandering. Copyright <laughs> I can't say my name. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh copyright current for personnel. That way I get half right. the winnings. Uh-huh. Uh, Gee, well, who are you, you Mrs. Bezos? <laughs> Thank you, Hank, for that amount of money. But you're not going to give your money away to charity like some other <laughs> oh, who billionaire is, heiresses. You know, uh, oh, I'm trying to think. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Hedge, uh, Mitch Hedberg, Mitch Hedberg said, you know, I, you know, he he got a slice of pizza, and they gave him the slice of pizza the size of donate to charity and the pie chart if you won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God bless him! No, hey, for that amount of money, I I I'd be uh, I I blow Jeff Bezos for the next ten years to get you know that kind. But no, seriously, with the gerrymandering, it is it's Blotus has been obstructing. Out in the open, credit where credit's due. I mean, he's obstructing the obstruction investigation. And here's Mueller saying, yeah, we can't charge him with you know, anything. So they know that. It's a free license to do that. It's the same thing. They know this is racist. They know it's it's marginalizing people. They know it's it's you know fucking up with the scary mandarin. And, and and they don't give a fuck. You know, it, it's just it, it's it's we're going to try to force apartheid and the u.s by clinging the white people cannot win playing fair they know that we know that wait we are white but you know so they're openly saying yeah we're gonna do this and well this is the first time anything like this has ever happened in the world where a government is just brazenly being openly racist and you know using brute force to do what they want and do what their will wait a second no wait a minute it's been happening for the, years in on, Korea. Say, on. This is in. Say, say, I'm looking through the history books. Uh, Germany, 1930s. Wait a minute. Um, so here's one fun thing. The Mueller investigation that cost us $40 million. Cost us forty. Joe, they're taking money out of your pockets to pay for this witch hunt. That's my, my meth money. <laughs> fun fact. The government has seized, has procession, and will be auctioning off the property from one Manafort, from one Paul Manafort. Um, Is it like the little mnemonic device I gave you a couple of episodes ago? Did it ago? work? Yes. Did it work? It worked well. Um, yeah. The, uh, the ill-gotten gains that they have taken back from him is valued at $47 million. The Mueller report, witch hunt investigation, has net gained us to the tune of $7 million to this point. So all the money that they want to say, without this investigation, we wouldn't have had that. So really, you know, they should, the Fox News people should be thanking Mueller because he's, you know, we, we, we're we going to split those games. So what is your cut of the $7 million, do you think? Uh, it's the same as that slice of pizza that Mitch Hedberg <laughs> got. Um, all right. Well, well, you know, we're not going to talk any more awful. Uh, that's it. I don't know if you want to edit this out. I don't even know if you read this, but I was trying to think. You haven't done Paul Lynn in a while. Three episodes. Yeah. For me, plus plus we had a week off. That's a month. That's way too long. I call it a strong off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> See what he did there is where I and then he Weak. and then turned it upside down. Um, like, don't don't make me look up words. <laughs> don't make me do this. Yeah, well, you'll be typing in H O M O. Wait a minute. <laughs> Dude, that as soon as I hit H, you don't think that comes up? <laughs> I'm like, oh. Google knows you like the front of your hand, you know. Um, so, so I, I, you know, I was thinking um, maybe because it's been so long, we haven't had the podcast last week, and it would just delight me to no end to hear you doing Paul Lynn's version of Frank Sinatra's "My Way." All right, no duress here. Doing it out of the kindness of my heart. And now, the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case. Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this <laughs> I did it my way Regrets, it's the shoes, <laughs> but then again, too many to mention, did I mention the shoes, I did what I had to do, and saw it through, without exemption, I planned each charted course, and careful step along the byway and more much more than this I did it my way yes there were times I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could you know what I mean. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and swallowed it, baby. <laughs> I faced it all, and I stood tall and did it my way. <laughs> I've loved I've laughed and cried, I've had my Phil, and my John, and Larry, get it? And now, <laughs> as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think, I think, I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. Oh, no. No, not me. I did it my way. For what is a man but a grown up boy? <laughs> if not himself, then he has not to say the thing. He truly feels And not the words Of one who kneels Oh boy The record shows I gave the blows And did it my way When the Jews didn't stop me That, that might be that might be the best one ever. <laughs>
That just might be the best self-indulgent theater ever. I'm going to go get some Kleenex and, and enjoy this defunct sponsor. Or not. <laughs> You're supposed to eat pizza, not wear it. No problem, Uncle Paul. I've got Dynamo. You'll need dynamite. That stains from yesterday. Dynamo penetrates deep, right through fibers for a dynamite clean wash. Not this disaster. Watch. See? No set in stain. Shirt, socks, pants, dynamo. You're magical. You're quick, Uncle Paul. <laughs> dynamo penetrates deep for a dynamite clean. Oh, I wish I'd said that. So, 48 hours ago, I would have come in here... All cocky and braggy that the Bruins were on their way to a sweep of the St. Louis Blues. Arr! Did you see game two? Yes. I don't know. Honestly. I, actually, I missed the first period. So did they. Like, I, I they came out so, so flat. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I missed periods. Wait, what? Uh, honestly, and now the, and, and that was the talk. After game one, it was such a dominating game. It, everybody was like, because he swept Carolina, you know, I'm not going through the whole playoffs, yeah. but they, I mean, was St. Louis going to win a game now? And at, that hit. Oh, the crew how, hit. Yeah. How many, how many versions? So the, the latest version of the crew hit, I said, did you, you see, I liked it on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> was it set to music or something? I didn't see no, the one. It, it's, I'm, I'm, I, I will never do a justice. So I, Want to make sure you're going to pull it up and try to play it on air? No, no, no. I'm just oh. going to show you. Maybe you can describe it. Okay, it's great. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Krug, he's uh, he's on the ice, charging helmetless towards a, one of those portals, like an Avengers style Doctor Strange portal, and he goes in, zaps in, and then comes out of another portal, and then hits the. Uh, it's <laughs> it's the life, the ghost, right? And then does that um, Doctor Strange thing where he can knock the guy's spirit exactly. out of exact right, of the, right. He, he knocks the ghost out of the the, the St. Louis Blues. But that's uh, it. I, I mean, I, I want my sweep and my cockiness, and now they've ruined everything, and I have to be stripped by the time this drops. Game Drop. three. Drop. <laughs> we uh, we'll be going into game four as this drops. So hopefully, it's two one Bruins. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know. But uh, we'll see. Who knows what the future holds? I, uh, I don't know, Mister Woody. <laughs> see. So what else? Are, oh, so the big controversy in in sport right now. So Barstool Sports sponsored, like at all these playoff games, there's always like a towel on the back of every chair, whether it's white or this or that. Barstool was a sponsor with the towels at the Bruins game for game. Oh, I want to go back to game two. So going into game two, everyone's like. The Bruins do this huge wave, the Bruin flag thing, and they always have somebody huge, like Bobby Orr did it the last series and all these other people. And going into game two, it's like, who do you have do it? Because they might sweep, so there might not be a game five. So do you save the biggest of the big for game five, or do you get – and it was Belichick who, oh, who did wow, game two. Yeah. You know? And it's like everyone's like – well, do you have Belichick do two and Tom Brady do five? But wait, what if there is no game five? It's like that's the cocky stuff we all had going into this. We suck. Um, but well, there will be a game five. So you know, thanks to Belichick. Thank you. Yeah, it's, well, it, it's all his fault. Going into the third period, like because the crowd went nuts. I'm like, somebody get hoodie to wave the flag again. <laughs> um, but so Barstool Sports sponsored the thing, and so the the fake outrage of people. It's like, I mean, so wait, time out. W slow down. Outrage of what? Um, because Barstool Sports is a bro. Yeah, it's very bro y. You know, um, kind of misogynist. It, well, it oh, is. Tiny. It is. But here's the thing the CEO and the COO are women. They have a female sports podcast. Right. There's like in the top three or five rated, like female driven sport, like with both hosts are okay. females. So, yeah, it does have that frat boy bro type thing, but at the same time, it's not. So, the out the fake outrage that you're perceiving, or no, not that the people, people, that people are the Boston Herald, the Globe. How the dare Logan. they have bar Barstool Sports sponsor the towel at game two right. of the Stanley Cup final? Like, was there anything untoward on the towel? No, huh. no. It, 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 it just should. said Barstool Sports. It had the stool logo and the like the logo from Barstool Sports. And a small one, you know. Oh, who gives a shit? Right, exactly. I mean, people... 
You know what? We're just piss ants. You know what? Maybe the rest of the country has a point about Boston. Right. Well, that's the thing. No, we it, are the, the national media also, because Barstool's not a local thing, and so many people in the national media just lost their shizzle over it. It's like, really? You know, this this feeds into the snowflake, like, ruffle feathers. And you know what? Maybe they'll have a point when we find out something weird about Barstool Sports in about two or three years, you know? I don't know. They've had a history of being gross. No, it's like also, the, you know, these organizations that... Like, that have always taken donations from the Kraft Foundation who are now like, you know, sure, we can use this $200,000 to shelter abused women, but this monster got a hand job. So, yeah. well, you know, sure, this woman will have to sleep out on the streets and go back to their abusive husbands, but we, uh, we're we not taking that. Yeah, we're getting into heaven because we're not going to give them the money that uh, has been sullied by this man. What, why are you blaming Sully? What what why what what, what is Sully? Basically, have to do? honestly, you throw a rock at a Sully, you're gonna hit a scumbag <laughs> somewhere. Like if there's a room full of Sullies, nine times out of ten. Well, as my oldest son it. was saying, these two Sullies went into a <laughs> <laughs> So uh you know what? I'm not I'm I'm going to really try to not talk NFL and the Patriots for, for, for the month of June. Yeah. I mean, you know, OTAs and all that stuff, fuck it. So this gets. Oh, me. you upset that Tom Brady didn't go to the OTAs? You know, I, it, has it has it stuck in your craw a little bit? You, you, Have you been no. tweeting about it every moment of your no, existence? No, okay, a little, yeah, a little. Like, <laughs> anytime Tom Brady, anytime I think, the, anytime the letters TB <laughs> pop up in a tweet, you're like, you know, oh by the way, nice to see you at the OTAs. Sarcasm, you know, <laughs> like you can't cut the guy a break. Well, that's the thing. It's like, didn't he not show up for the OTAs? You know, in previous Super Bowl winning seasons, he didn't show up last year. And um, how so, how did things work out? Pretty darn good. <laughs> okay. So you know what? Calm your tits. But that will, calm your tits. Over but there. that opens up the door to a little USFL talk. Do you right. realize it is USFL season after all? It tr- it truly is. Fun USFL fact: in season two, they added the two point conversion. So that's in 1983, which was not adopted to the NFL. Until 1994, like 11 years later, they're like, and, and and look, that always happens. It's funny. The ABA was the one that came up with the three point shot, and and that was one of the things that the NBA is like, this is a joke league. This isn't real basketball. And as soon as the ABA folded and they brought four teams to the NBA, it's like, you know, that three point thing that those guys had was was pretty good. And the, and the same thing. Like the WHA did away with the two line pass. There's so many things that these other sport leagues, you know, come up with. Yeah. That, you know, that the, the whether it's the NFL, the NHL, or whatever, it's like, oh, that's gimmicky. And as soon as it goes away, it's like, you know, they had a really good thing with that. I think our fans would enjoy this. So that's this week's To the Victor Go the Spoils. Indeed it does. And the one dollar to Donald Trump for the collusion of uh what? Yes, there was none. <laughs> no, no. In that case, there was, and he was the victim of the NFL colluding with the networks to bury the USFL, and he was paid one dollar in damages. Oh, yeah. uh, so that is uh, that is this week's fun fact with the USFL, and I think I'm done with sport for this yeah, week. Ironically, you're talking about the three point line being yeah. adapted by, by the NBA from the ABA. Aren't they now talking about, or have for years talked about doing away with the three point line? Like it's almost like. Because isn't there some like to talk about like the three point shots are like so easily done now? Or are they, they going to extend the three point well, line? Well, that's like, it. It's it is now. Well, that's why the uh, the big three line? the big three have a four point shot, mm. and it's about halfway. It's two spots to the left and the right. It's about halfway from mid court to the three point key because basketball has changed so much. Where you know. Shooters are just basketball you know. is now the cheat and double dribble. Yeah, the video right, exactly. Game. <laughs> it's, it's, exactly. They're taking advantage of outdated technology. <laughs> that your Cleveland? Yeah, that was not bad. Yeah, right. hey, I get it. You yeah. know how bad can it be? That's right. So um, that now brings us to the video section. Of, but so this past weekend, my management, my management was working. For the old family she you know worked for over Memorial Day weekend. Well, I was on the other side of the country playing hockey. And the family that she works for, a uh, son was in town from San Francisco, who is a I think is a child psychiatrist. 
you know, guy in his early 30s. And it's funny because talking to management, it's like, oh, it turns out, I forget the dude's name. He's home this weekend. He comes back every year because him and all his buddies from college also have a Memorial Day hockey tournament, just like all the F and H guys, you know, play for the John Taylor Fertilizer Organization in Phoenix for you know that 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 hockey tournament. This guy's all his buddies from college come to Boston to play a hockey tournament, um, video game hockey. All oh, right, and and it's funny because the dad. I know Bruce is a ticket guy, loves for hockey. He's like, yeah, but that's not real. And it's like, you know what? It's like, I, I think it is. It's after, after high school, after college, it's hard to stay friends. It doesn't matter what brings them together. I think, I think that is awesome. I don't think it's any yeah. less cool. Not that less How cool m- than playing hockey yeah, with uh, Dave Trefani. <laughs> Well, let's just say this. How many busted knees were right. made in the video game hockey tournament? Wait, did I not come limping in here with knee braces on that I'm yeah. not recovered? I was like, is that Gronk over there? I can't <laughs> see so good. So, and well, by the way, you being mistaken for Gronk, that's a long that, shot. That's, that's a stretch. I'll, I'll take that, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, so the funny thing is this guy is a doctor. His friends were all doctors and lawyers. You know what I mean? So it's like... Whatever the catalyst to get people together is, it does it's it's very hard to stay connected when you move away, when you have kids, when life really starts happening. And the fact that they make a commitment, hey, this is a big thing, let's get I don't I, I think it's fucking awesome. I, I think it's I, I really now at the same time, this is coming from a guy who went to Phoenix to play hockey and brought his PS4 with them and spent most of the down off ice time playing Resident Evil 2. You're, I mean, you gotta, you gotta like switch over to Resident Evil Zero or Four. Yeah, well, or the... now Four, now maybe, maybe I may go back to Five or Seven, but yeah, mm. no, Two is my jam right now. Yeah, but but it was fun because you know both John and Biff were like, "Oh, you are really good at this." You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's funny because Biff used to play the when it came out in '96, so it was nice that he was like, "Oh, this is how it's different," and I don't remember that character and stuff. But back to this guy has his hockey tournament, and I do. I think. You know, getting together. I mean, it's a social thing. They get together. They play a round robin tournament. So only a couple guys are playing at once. So you don't know what game they were playing. Do you? I don't know what version it is. I'm hope. I'm, I, is it a modern system? I, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. Hopefully, think it's ninety four. Right. Ninety four is the best. That's right? like the seminal EA Sports Sega Genesis, uh, the pivotal game. It's the it's the game that introduced the one timer. Oh, you know to. So I mean, and it was also it had the rosters and, it, it and the, a, the music is great. Yeah, it had the like music right, it had, is great. Right, it had it played the uh, local music and it was great. Um, Good times. So, so you do any? You do what? Before we do a random video game, what was the what was in the last two weeks? What was the video game playage in the uh, the Joe household? The Joe household. I played Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii. I had beaten the game. And if you collect 120 stars as Mario, you can unlock playing the game again as Luigi. So I hadn't unlocked... I was two stars shy of getting 120 stars when I last played it like four years ago, five years ago, whatever it was. So I was like, yeah, let's see what's... I, let me see if I can take tackle this and then I'll call it a day. And then I tackled it. I beat the game. I play, I play as Luigi. Now I'm playing all of the levels over again. I'm collecting 120 more stars to get to... The final, like one hundred two hundred forty first star, um, and uh, I did that. So then you beat that, you you get the ultimate kingdom or whatever it's called, and so I hundred percent of a game that I haven't played in about you know five or six years, and uh, that's my life. That's that is great. Is it? It, it is. <laughs> and now I'm playing Super Mario Galaxy two and try and I'm one star shy. I'm on the final star of that. So I had and virtually- you took time off to do this podcast. You are a mensch. Yes, yes, well, I am. Is it? Why don't you have that last star? Is it like just an impossible level? No, I just like you know got sleepy last night. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to bed at some point. Did you? Yeah, I did. You know why not? Uh, so uh, no. what else was? Yeah, that was, I think that's the highlight. I think it's enough of the achievement talk in my world of video games. Let's go to a random video game. Now, first, you take your headphones off there, Skippy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. It has. As he limps over. Do you need a, a rascal to get over? To, <laughs> do you want to Uber over to my... <laughs> yeah, I actually do. Oh, my God. Here he goes. 
He's uh, he grabbed a game off of my Nintendo Entertainment System collection shelf, and um, I think it's a game that starts with the letter P. <clears throat> I think. I think. No, it's not a P game. I think Paperboy would have been the first P game. So let's see. It's not Orb. Uh, is it Othello? Classic, classic. Uh, oh. Uh, gee. Does it begin with the letter O? No. You oh. Right oh, I was, uh, it's O. Uh, Pac Man. It is. All right. It's Pac Man. Pac Man. You know, um, there's a great unreleased parody of Taxman done by Weird Al Yankovic from 1982 mm. called Pac-Man. Like, he, it's, he put it out as a demo, but he never put it on an album. I suggest you listen to it um, because it's funny. And, um, but that's, that's, uh, I mean, it's fucking Pac-Man, man. This is the, the, the version I have. There were multiple versions made for the Nintendo system. This is the licensed Tengen version. Tengen was a company that got its name porting arcade games to the Nintendo, but they were doing it unlicensed. Like they weren't, they, they weren't getting it going through the licensing process of Nintendo at the time. So they had like workarounds in their, in their hardware. They basically reverse engineered the system versus like paying Nintendo for the, the blank cartridges to put their games on. So long story short, they were sued by Nintendo. Nintendo won. Tengen had to remove all their unlicensed games from store shelves, but then they eventually partnered up with Nintendo and put together put out licensed games. And this is the licensed licensed version of Pac-Man. It's uh, it's you know, it's a pretty faithful port of Pac-Man. You can't fuck up Pac-Man too much, except if you have it on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. That version of Pac-Man is horrendous. Do you remember think... Pac-Man wearing a hat? Uh, yes, in Pac-Land. I think when they because there, there was an arcade game called Pac Land where I think he wore a hat. Yeah, you know he did. He this, had a hat. <laughs> yeah, right. This is yeah. This is sort of like the middle age phase of Pac Man where he's got a family. You know, he goes to work with a briefcase every day. He wears a fedora. He drives a sports. Is that car. no? That's not a fedora. What kind of you know? What's like one of those a derby? No, a derby is like rounded. Drop the, the vernacular. <laughs> not the derby. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, this is uh, Pac Man settling down, you know? I picked, this is like his Archie Bunker phase, you know, where he just sort of Racist. comes home. Yeah, oh, right, right. Well, you know, he's the, all the colored ghosts, you know? Uh, it's fucking Pac Man. Before you read the Pac Country, uh, what, what, do you, what do you think he ranked it? Five stars. It's fucking Pac Man. Can't, can't go any higher. Uh, has a two page spread, basically. Oh, no, it's a one page spread. Four stars. Whoa. Well, I'll be. It's uh, it's it's Pac Man. <laughs> that, that, that's all the reviews. <laughs> so. Right, I think it's basically like a, you know, it's a two word review, shit sandwich. <laughs> it's, it's, that's not, you can't write that. Uh, Where do they publish that? And if you uh, you didn't own this, oh, five bucks. I don't yeah, know. that's what I would have thought, but I'm not finding it any cheaper than fourteen. Hmm. All right, that, oh, was oh, it D a limited run? No, that, well, that's DK Oldies. That's a website that sells like a lot of refurbished and kind of. You know, completer, com more complete sets of games. So uh, maybe that might be a bit skewed. But hey, you know no, what? Who knows? Find, like literally, I'm I'm scrolling through. Maybe I think Pac-Man may be next to Tetris. I think Tetris is probably the most ported game to the most available platforms ever, and Pac-Man is probably second to that. So if you didn't have it, you would be running out of buying it after listening to your own review. Yes. So when you if you edit the show back and you hear it, just remember that you do already own it and don't. No, right. I, you know, I, you know, I got to get all the versions of Pac-Man available. <laughs> this is the licensed versions. I need the unlicensed version. So that's Pac-Man. Hooray. What are you watching? Um, I finished actually the first season of Barry on HBO, which is great. It's the Bill Hader uh, show where he plays a hitman who's an ex-Marine, small-time hitman, uh, Stephen Root is the guy that he kind of works right. with, um, and the first episode, his target uh, apparently takes like a small acting class in L.A., and it, so Barry follows him into this acting course that's being taught by a guy play, played by Henry Winkler, and, and and for some reason you know he kills the guy, but then like he gets sucked into this acting course because he did like a crossroads, like he's kind of this weird disconnected person who's just he's a cold-blooded killer ex-marine probably obviously PTSD but 
he doesn't want to be a hitman anymore. Like he wants to do something more. And for some reason, he gets mistaken as a newcomer to the acting class by Henry Winkler, and he gets drawn into the acting class. So he's living he's living this double life. So he's doing the hits for this like small time operation that's I guess their clients now are like these like Chechen uh, mobsters. Uh, Stephen Root's like their point man that you know hooks them up. He's always getting his ass kicked by the Chechens. Like you know, it's a it's a funny funny show. It's a really smartly written show. I haven't seen season two. They're actually on season three now, so I'm a, a year behind. Uh, but thanks to HBO Go, you can watch it anytime you want. So I'm I'm watching that, and I'm also speaking of HBO, watching uh, another lighthearted fair, Chernobyl. Oh, the miniseries. I don't know how many parts it's going to be, but I think it's on episode four now and it starts from the incident you know the explosion and then first responders the 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 crew's reaction and like how how they report it to the the kremlin and the government and how the government is covering up what really happened they're denying aid from the united states like they're they don't want help from the u.s or any outsiders they want to put on that air of superiority and soviet strength to the world you know, this couldn't possibly happen. In uh-huh. How does that work out? Did not work out well. Has it got to the point where, and and I'm not sure, you know, how much it will get into this, but basically, it was the, 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 this nuclear reactor is built in like a U storage storage facility. It's not anywhere close to what you would expect something like that to be built in. Uh, I don't know. Was it built to spec? It was. It, I think there were some uh, oversights. Uh, there was some design flaws, and it was only it was the re- reactor four. By the way, there were three other working reactors that they had to keep intact and had to keep running um, in order to provide electricity and power to the you know the country or that part of the country. But they had to do something about the reactor four that ex- it literally exploded. And apparently, what had happened is that I don't know too much about the history of Chernobyl. I'm kind of learning as I go, but they had shut down. Their reactor core, uh, they, they turn off like all this. They were doing basically, ironically, running a safety simulation or to or a safety test, and they didn't follow procedures. Their the level of incompetence is exposed in the in the in the miniseries. Now, do you know that the uh, the English translation for Chernobyl is Springfield? <laughs> <laughs> And that Mr. Burns is actually, <laughs> I think they have the same security procedures in place. Uh, what it was is there was a guy who had like one of those like desk ornaments that would just poke the Y button. Um, so, no, I'm a little disappointed that that's the review you went for. I thought you were going to break down the four episodes of Facts of Life you watched with George Clooney. Nothing. Oh man! Imagine watching the Facts of Life with George Clooney. That'd be oh god, yeah, oh, god. right, yeah, it'd be pretty oh. awesome. You could, you could give me some behind the scenes <laughs> gossip. I did, yeah, I did watch Smart Ass. Um, oh, and I also, I guess, well, you didn't see it, but I also watched the live from in front oh, of a studio right. audience, uh, the reenactment of All in the Family and the Jeffersons live. And it was, it was all right. It was good. Forced funny. Um, no, it was. It was a a very good SNL type sketch, but they stuck with the script for the most part. Was it an old episode they redid? Yeah, so these were the actual episodes. The All in the Family episode was the one where the Jeffersons are moving away. So it's like the crossover episode where they're finally going to the East Side. Where they're to the moving Bible. on up. Yes. Woody Harrelson was Archie Bunker. Uh, Marissa Tomei, Edith Bunker. Fun fact... Marissa Tomei, older than when Gene Stapleton played her. Okay. How old was Carol O'Connor when the, when when All in the Family started? In, yeah, in like 71, probably. I think it was 47. Dude! Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, four years younger, three years younger than me. Like, Shut up, you! Has he been 65 forever? <laughs> is that what it is? It's like Pretty some, much. Same thing. It's like when you look... And Ed Asner now, yeah. and you think, wait, Mary Tyler Moore is forty five years ago. How the fuck old is like? He is he one hundred and three? He had, to his credit, he had darker hair in the earlier Lou Grant year. But seriously, think about that. Think how old like he. So he same thing. I mean, when you saw if when you were 
15 years old, if somebody said, how old is Lou Grant? You look at him and say, I don't know, dead? You know, like, well, we're not talking about Lou Grant. We're but, talking but I'm about saying, our... same, same thing with Carol O'Connor. It's like, if you, how old? He's always been old. Yeah, he's always played an old guy. But right, he's had a shock of white hair <laughs> since his 40s, you know, or probably earlier, you know, whatever. But yeah, he always, that's that just a, a testimony to how, a testament, whatever, uh, whatever the word is, to how well he played the role. Like, like I said, I think I've said in an earlier podcast, as a kid, a dumb kid, I believed that these were real people that they just put on television. Like I they were I lost so much of my um disbelief that these are just actors portraying roles because they played them so real to my feeble minded self. Uh but the I like the way uh, Marissa Tomei took on the Edith role. She she played it up. I think she was a little more doddering than even Gene Stapleton was. So it was, it was kind of a parody of, a slight parody. But they did a good job. I think the person who delivered the best was Jamie Foxx as Sherman Helmsley, George Jefferson. That's great. Uh, he came in and he flubbed his line. Oh, he, good. He, he did flub a line and he, and he addressed it. They had a good time with it. And then they went to the first episode of The Jeffersons. Wanda Sykes played Louise pretty well. It was a weird choice to have Stephen Tobolowski, you know, Ned Ryerson from uh, Groundhog Day. He played Mr. Bentley, the British guy. Right, right. So that was weird. Uh, and I think he had a British accent. So it was just, it was just a, kind of an odd choice. But then you had Will Ferrell play Tom uh, Wilk, uh, Wilkins. So Wilkes. What the hell? Yeah, I think it was Wilkes. I forget their names. And um, the woman from Kerry Washington, who she was, she was on Scandal, that ABC show. Right, right. Uh, she played uh, the Roxy Roca role. Um, who played Who played the son? Uh, I forget. A, um, Chadwick Boseman. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I forget who the guy was. I didn't recognize. He was a younger guy, so like he's probably on a TV show that I don't watch. Um, and the daughter was played by uh, Amber Stevens, who's Shadow Stevens' daughter. So she was like, it was a fitting role for her as Jenny because she was. A white, she has a white father and a black mother in real life. She was shadowing him. Yes, and then it was announced that there was a um, an actress from the current One Day at a Time that net, that was on Netflix. <clears throat> she was supposed to play Florence, and then when the whole episode is leading up to Florence showing up for the first time, and you hear the doorbell ring, and in comes Marla Gibbs. Like, you know, she's like 80-something years That's old. That's great. Yeah. And then in between, like, the commercial breaks or in between episodes, they'd have Jimmy Kimmel and Norman Lear sitting down and, like, just, you know, talking about the shows and doing a little little chatter for about a minute or two between each episode. And that was good. So, and it was all live and it was fun. And it was a nice little experiment, you know? Like, it's not something you want to have done, like... All the time. Are you early, maybe? Uh, you, I mean, you? I don't know. Maybe. Well, right. Like, what are you going to do next? The facts of life. Facts of life. <laughs> <laughs> you, you son of a bitch. Um, so that's what... I'll, okay, so that's enough TV talk. And we're at the hour and 30 minute mark, so... Yeah, we're, 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 we're going to wrap it up. We're going to make up for lost time, I guess. What do you want? Oh, oh, I yeah. know what you do. You've, you've done nothing but play hockey all I week. Put in that, you know, I, I restart. We're watching. It's on Amazon Prime, a, a BBC show called The Mighty Boosh. Mm. It's fun. You know, very British... It's, it, it, it would be an adult swim show from 10 years ago if it didn't come out on the BBC 20 years ago. Very funny, two kind of losers working in a suit. It, it's great. I mean, they have it, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Yeah. You, know, you, you watch, watch the first, like, I don't know, three minutes of one episode, and you're either all in or you're all out. It's, it's not a middle of the ground thing. I am. I'm all in. Okay. Uh, parenting tip. Uh, I'll start. Um, and finish. Hey, you know what? If you go to the movies and you can't buy some fucking popcorn because some high school kid doesn't know to put the sign in front of the register that says casually, be polite, but be firm and, and call the manager over and in front of your son, you know, make sure you, you explain, okay, I'm going to be a dick, but I'm going to be a polite a dick. This is something wrong. Advocate for yourself, and if a grown man working in a movie theater tells you he cries every day at the office, go go easy on him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my parenting too. Yeah, go easy on him. And that's a nice way to end the uh, 102nd episode of Carnival Personnel. I think this is episode 102. I think. <laughs>
Thank you again, Joe, for the Paul and that. That that will make my way. When I play this back today on Monday, as we're all <laughs> listening to it, I will be like, you know what? Uh, John was right. Joe, Joe is the talent keeping this whole thing going. Oh, boy. So that's it. Um, enjoy your um, flag day or whatever the holiday is coming up. And um, Jacques, I know it's been a while, so just a reminder, don't forget – 